Why does it seem that a lot of activists or politicians who are against white people end up marrying white people? This video is going viral. Let's run the clip. And I get that it must be a struggle for Don Lemon. He said that out loud, that he believes that white men are the biggest threat to the United States. He's also supported things like critical race theory, which across the board labels white people as oppressors who are responsible for all black people's problems. And he went on to marry a white man. But you have to ask yourself, why is it that you fell in love with that white man? And what is it about his whiteness that you were able to ignore at the altar? Most of them radicalized right up to the right. And we have to start doing something about them. There is no travel ban on them. There is no ban on, you know, they had the Muslim ban. There is no white guy ban. So we already got Don Lemon making these comments about white people married to a white man. What about AOC? making these comments about white people, married slash, I guess, engaged to a white man. Kamala Harris, making these comments about white people, married to a white man. Ilhan Omar, making comments about white people, married to a white man. Supreme Court Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson, making comments about white people, supporting critical race theory, married to a white man. Boom, long story short, the clip is from, I would say moderate right-wing commentator, Amala Ekpunobi, who actually dates white guys herself and she's basically saying that a lot of people who have criticized the white power structure or straight white men are actually dating or married to straight white men oh this is interesting and i think this relates to being asian even though the example she used because she's half black she's talking about uh, a lot of the black politicians who are in uh figureheads who are left-leaning right uh we can kind of relate to it in an asian way because i feel like a lot of the people who speak up about asian representation or kind of like criticize white people often are dating white people now now, I think it's it may or may not be different, but basically we have a list of reasons why we think that a lot of people who say they're against white people still end up with white people, men and women, by and the way. And apparently uh, a lot of the examples she used were actually very leftist, like Indian girls in the UK as well are also married to white guys right. while sort of dissing white people. Right, I do, I do want to say that there are plenty of activists who are with the people you would think they are with. And I'm also sure that there is a, a little bit of cherry picking in these examples because these are some of the more famous ones. But I will say this, the evidence is there when laid out one after another, it is kind of funny. And by the way, here's a quick disclaimer. Anybody can do whatever they want, guys. Yes. Absolutely, everybody should do whatever makes them happy. Yes. But also people could just make observations of patterns too. Exactly, marry and date whoever you want, but if you're in a position where you're speaking up against that group of people that you're marrying, people are going to question it and, and wonder right. why. Whether you're Michelle Wu or Constance Wu or Sandra Oh or Gemma Chan or whatever it is, Michelle Yo. Anyway, guys, <laughs> let's just get into the reasons. Point number one, Andrew, this is uh, they the seven reasons why activists may still often date white people is that they feel like they're dating one of the good ones that aren't part of perpetuating white supremacy power structures. Right, so I think... Let's be clear. I think most of the activists that are against white things are more, they do kind of jokingly diss on white culture and all oh, the food is bland, it's unseasoned. But really, I think they are talking about white supremacy or the white power structure or how white people um, keep themselves at the top or something like that. You know what I mean? That's what they're more referring to. But it seems like they're always making an exception when they're marrying or dating that person uh, like another white person because they're probably going to say something like, oh, well, they support me and, ha and, and they're, well, they're, an ally they're to not one of the people who perpetuates these things. Right. And I actually think that that is a pretty valid reason. I think Amala like downplayed is, plays it in her video because she wants to more delegitimize them. But honestly, I think that's actually mostly what they're thinking. Do you think it's because there's different types of white people? We have to start yeah. parsing out white skinned people because they're not all the same. Well, if we really want to get granular, I believe that the white population uh, breaks into 12 different categories in America, but the primary yeah. ones are German, British, and Irish. However, do you have to go to like, or are only German and British people bad because they were more of the slave owner class, right. whereas like Irish people were poor. And then obviously like Michelle Wu, she's the Democratic mayor of um, Boston. Her husband's Polish. Polish people were not mm. part of the old school white American power yeah, structure. Yeah, I mean- They're like newcomers, Slavs were slaves to Western Europeans in, right. in Eastern Europe for a long time, et cetera. Right, I think that, yeah, they may appear white, but you're right that we don't know exactly the ethnic makeup 
or cultural background or immigrant background of all these white looking people. Maybe they're half Iranian. Right. Maybe they're half their their parents speak another language, so but, they're immigrants. So then they wouldn't fall under that. Andrew AOC's husband looks like he's a redhead. He could be Irish or Scottish. Irish and Scottish were, I believe, quasi or enslaved by the British. Right. It Even also in the British Isles. Also, depending on when his family got here, who knows? So I guess you're right. That to be fair, we don't know the backgrounds of all these people. Right, right, right. Maybe it gets granular. Point number two, they marry into uh, whiteness in order to plant themselves inside their family and use the proximity to whiteness to push their agenda forward. Basically, become part of the tribe so you can try to influence or take over the tribe. Yeah, so this is, I, this is, I don't think this is the main reason, but I think subconsciously maybe when you're trying to reach elite tiers and make something happen and you have a strong agenda like a lot of these politicians do and these outspoken people do, then maybe you think like, hey, I can use my white counterpart, my white husband or white girlfriend or whatever, or this white family and these white connections that I'm about to get in this white world that I'm in and use that to push my agenda through so that I can influence the rest of it. So it's like you become part of the family so that you can inherit the house. Right, right, right. House taker versus what? House maker, right? Right, right? These are different game theory things. You guys got to look into game theory. Point number three, they may not believe that who they marry is a political decision. It's just a personal based love decision. Yeah. So I, I would say, David, I mean, you would agree for famous people whose kind of brand, maybe it's not the only thing they talk about. I know AOC does other stuff, like talks about other laws, but the ones that she's famous for is the racial stuff usually, right? And it's usually like anti-white structure. So for someone like AOC, who's kind of known for talking about a thing, but then she goes home to a white person, it is kind of, it looks funny. It looks funny. Right. You cannot deny. You can't that- deny it because they're known for criticize. Well, it seems like their personal choices are not in alignment with their macro views. Yeah, it's like saying that I'm known as like the biggest like uh, critic of Scorsese movies, but at home I only watch Scorsese movies. But I think that Scorsese movies are overrated, but I still watch them anyways. Right, right, right. They could be thinking about it just like I found the person who made my life the best. And because we're in a white country, a white guy is able to make their life the best. And they need to have their best home life to do their best work outside of the home. To be fair, we got to talk about Ann Coulter, who said that she would never vote for Vivek Ramaswamy because she, he was Indian. And, and Hindu, and she didn't trust him. Yeah, and Ann Coulter actually had dated an Indian guy. Yeah, I want to say multiple P- POCs. She dated multiple people of color, men of color, and she is considered considered extremely racist. So... I'm just saying, even Ann Coulter, who's on the right side, guys, this is not just the left side. The right side does this too. I mean, you, it's I, just I, a lot of, no. it makes you question of a lot of people who say big picture things to make a lot of money even live or believe them. First right? of all, I know like kind of racist white dudes who like really don't like minorities or I've seen them on the internet and then they're like dating like Asian women or, or ethnic women like that I just agree with that. Like, it's just... I don't know. Is it just love? Like, is it just love then? It doesn't matter. You can just date, like, maybe hey, it's not political. Listen, guys, I'm not saying it is or it isn't, but Obama writes about it. If you guys read about it, you guys got to look at Obama's thing. Um, point number four, they're doing it as a secret plan to rid the world of the dominant, scary white people by marrying them and having kids with them to wipe out their bloodlines. <laughs> this is actually, interestingly enough, a theory from a few white guys who don't like ethnic women and I think racist white women who don't like how so many ethnic women marry like good white guys. Right. But then also a lot of people think this is ridiculous. Uh, listen, guys, as an Asian guy who has seen plenty of Asian women date and marry white guys, I'm going to go ahead and say, I don't think that's the plan. I, how do you know? I Maybe do- <laughs> they just had a plan for the last, like, since anime Wong, there's a, it's a plan. Yeah, I don't. They just didn't tell us. I don't know, but I do know. I heard some racist white people talk about how, like, they're like, ah, they're trying to wipe out the white bloodlines by everybody mixing these weak white men falling for all these ethnic women. We're going to dilute our white bloodlines. Like, you've seen that comment somewhere in the 
in the you know extreme. somewhere in the ether, somewhere yeah. in the internet, dark web, wherever you want to. I mean, I feel like some of those dark web things are seeping into the regular web nowadays. But at the end of the day, there's those are somebody's real thoughts. Point number five: the pursuit of media and politics is a very white thing to do, and these people likely grew up around a lot of white people, low key. So they're just being what they grew up with. Yeah. Even though of their political stance is to be against the white structures. Right, right, right. And obviously being against white structures doesn't mean that you want to delete all white people, by the way. That's not what they're saying either. But um, I think this is the truth for like a lot of Hollywood actors and actresses, right? Like even a lot of Asian guy actors, by the way, do date white women. Less than the Asian women yes, do. Yes, less than the Asian women, but almost like um, the I would majority. say 50%. I would say over 50% of the notable Asian female actresses probably date uh, non-Asian and probably mostly white. So I would say, but because- And even the guys, it might be 50%. Yeah, but because media and politics in Hollywood are ran and dominated by essentially white looking people, like whatever, white right. or Jewish or whatever, they're ran, those are like ran by those people. So when you're entering that space and it's ran by those people, you are more likely to get with those people just because that is what you're tuned to do. Yeah, well also I think even the minorities that pursue entertainment tend to be from a little bit more bougie, like private school, boarding school background than you think. Andrew, Ice Spice went to private school. Oh, You wouldn't even think that. But like we said, just like- I think a lot of people who are raised in ethnic communities or like enclaves or quote unquote, you know, and or to use the 1940s word like ghettos, you know, which the, I'm, ta I'm talking about the old school, old fashioned verbiage of ghetto, not the new school version. Like they're, they're going to just like operate within that for the rest of their life and not be like chasing these like larger macro bird's eye systems mm -hmm. like media and narratives and things like that. Point number six, they might not fully believe what they're saying, but they're saying it like a company CEO has to say, our company's products are the best on an investor call, literally doing their job to maintain whatever payment or status they're receiving. Yeah, well, this would be basically at this point, you're questioning everything they say and what they stand for. So you could say that they don't believe, but you don't know because they're still fighting for those things, but maybe right, they, on a policy but, level, they're fighting. But for maybe those things. they look at fighting for those things as just their job and their position that or, they were given, or their duty. Yeah, their duty that they don't necessarily like. They, they but they want their personal life to be how they want it. Yeah. Also, maybe I mean, yeah. There's just not a lot of yeah. So I guess. Point I, I would say I would say that this, funny enough, point number six about like just doing it for money. That's what Amala was trying to point to, but I think she was a little bit biased trying to like debase their political platforms. Yeah. I'm because not I, sure. I really think it's because they're more just like thinking what makes gives their life stability. Right. But that brings us to our last point, Andrew. White people, whether men or women, do you gain the most status? and have just the most desirable relationships when you date them in the white world. Right. So this is interesting because I would say when you're in those, like even politics in America is a white structure. I wish AOC and them would just say this. I wish they would just come out and be like, hey guys, listen, just so you know, you know who still runs the politics in this country. So, you know, I'm just marrying and dating people who are within this structure that I'm in. Like there's not that many like... Asian men and even black men at their level. And if they are, maybe those black men are married to white women as well. You know what I mean? So there's always that side. Like, I don't want to just put it on like the women that are doing this. Like, that's so bad. Obviously, we know tons of black athletes who are pro black, but probably still marry and date white women. That's extremely common. Well, there's a lot of like memes about it. Right. There's ex extremely common. We all know this. I mean, we just know people in, in our lives. Just like we know, I do know some very militant um, Asian guys who like to talk about their culture a lot who date non-Asian women as well. So I, I want to say that it's, I guess, in their world, though, in the world of media and politics, white people are probably the most desirable to date and marry because it's going to give you the most benefits in that system. Right. Well, what I noticed is there are a lot of successful ethnic guys in america but typically they more operate in their own community or enclave right more so than being like globally media like sort of like shape-shifting the winds of america uh, powerful that's why guys obama doesn't become president if he's with a white lady i don't think so 
Right, right, right. But it does seem like, yeah, the rules are different for the men versus the women because there's like a whole lot of buy-in and masculinity and patriarchy sure, versus sure. matriarchy and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, let's just get into the comments section, Andrew. Somebody said, usually people with very strong convictions are the ones who contradict themselves very badly. People tend to outwardly hate the thing that they inwardly desire the most. Basically, people are referring to the psychological theory of projection, Andrew. Mm. Um, how much do you think of it? Is, this is true. Like basically they love being white or they value it so much, but that's why they hate it. But then they have it in their own life. You mean it's like, because I love white things and white people so much, I desire them so much, but I'm not that. So I'm going to hate them. But when I get to a certain level, I will date them. Yeah. Uh, well, you know how a lot of people, like, some guess, people call it gaslighting, but you could right. gaslight anybody who hates something that they're projecting, that they love it. But I would always say, yes, you, you can and you can't. Because, like, for example, if uh, somebody hates vegetables, it's not because they secretly love vegetables so much and they want to be with vegetables. They just don't like vegetables. <laughs> but I'm saying it, it could be case to case. Sure. I could see projection sure. being the complex or the inferior, inferiority complex being, like, one of the reasons it, it depends yeah. person to person could be part of it. Um, this guy wrote, I think that they sort of romanticize and elevate white people in their characterization of them. The more power and privilege and, and guilt their worldview ascribes to them, the more desirable they become as a sort of a member of an evil aristocracy of the world. I think perhaps they can implicitly see non-white males as guiltless victims, but not necessarily as sexually desirable in the same way, because why would you want to get with a low-class victim? So basically he's saying that these activists view their own people as low-class victims, so they have a heart for them, but are not sexually desire to their own tribe wow this was written by a mixed person by the way uh, that's really interesting i um yeah i think that's an interesting comment i think that uh case by case you're right man i can't speak you cannot we don't know these people's relationships and i don't know what's in their hearts so you can never say but that would make some sense where it's like if you're fighting for your tribe and you're like, no, like down with the white system and our like, tribe picking on this. us because we are so weak. Right. right. But <laughs> then you look at like the men or women of that group and be like, yeah, well, that's why I don't want to get with one of you guys. So I got to get with somebody from up here so that I can, you know, like, but I'm still fighting for you guys. But like, I don't really want to be with you guys. Right. Like I'll fight for you. But I'm not with you. I like you. the fancy European dinners. <laughs> I don't want to just eat the yeah, mom I and pop local at, meals all the time. Can, I want to eat at a restaurant where you have three different forks and spoons, okay? Other than that, I don't want to do the, we're doing the hand thing. No. Uh, I wonder why white partners, what the white partners feel when they see them talking about white people in that way. Uh, I think that white people have been atomized to the point where their white partners, it could not bother them at all. Could they be potentially uh, self-hating white guys? Uh, possibly, uh, or they just like white people, just like, there's so many different types of white people. There's white people that identify as being white in the same way, like a Mexican identifies as being Mexican with the flag in the back of the car. I'm just kidding guys. You know what I mean? But then like, I'm saying that there's also white people who don't even see life like that at all. Right. It, right it's right. really pretty variable. I mean, it's like 65% of the population. Um, somebody said, does it have to do with Anglo versus Slavic? Like we be said, yeah, this, listen, there's different types of white people. Let's be honest. Let's be clear. White. If you like, get with a Slavic guy, you are not getting with somebody who has any colonies around the world. Yeah, I mean. That's dude, a Western European thing. Dude, if you get with a guy well, I guess Russians who's straight from the Netherlands who looks whiter than white, like he, those, those dudes, those women, men and women look super white from the Netherlands, but they're not like part of that. Group they were not considered a hyper colonial power, even yeah. if they had one or something like but that. But again, we're it's tough. We're just are we picking at straws here or what? I don't know. Um, somebody said uh these people don't even give back to their communities, they just diss white people to get rich to white people. Yeah, I don't know. Listen, it could be it's variable per person, yeah, right? Listen, I don't know. I mean, uh, any other comments? Um I'm sick of people only wanting to use facts when it benefits them, but completely ignore them when they're completely wrong. I see both sides doing this. I agree with this. Amala works for a right-wing network, pushing right-wing talking points. 
even though sometimes I agree and disagree with what she says. I think so many people find it so hard to be independent thinkers, Andrew. I watch liberal people like David Pakman. I watch conservative people like ABL. And I find myself constantly agreeing and disagreeing simultaneously with them. And I, you know what? I find out about most pundits that get a lot of views on the internet, Andrew. They're all guilty of downplaying or dismissing certain information that goes against their side and playing up stuff that goes for their squad. See? People always say, oh, Fung Bros, you're not this, that, or that side. I'm like, we're boring. We're being honest. We're being literally honest about it. Guys, we're not holding back. Listen, if some of this stuff that we said sounded more on that side and some of the stuff we said sounds on, on, the, le- on the other side, that's because it's... It's just both. There's yeah, we're just both calling some, it like we see it. There's some truth to it. I mean, God, I thought we we're pretty fair in this video. And, you know, I will say this. Like, I do think that when people are hyper career focused and hyper power focused and they want to climb up that ladder and be legendary and have a, uh, have a 40 page Wikipedia, right? Yeah. And go for power. I do think that they're going to overlook things and they can't live with their community. They can fight for things that can in turn benefit their community, but they're not living their life with them because part of it, I don't want to use it as an excuse, but when you're in those spheres, you do have to live amongst those people just to play that game. Maybe part of playing the game is getting with a white person, right? Like well, navigating the power structure to guide or impact or influence the power structure means you have to buy in to some extent. Yeah, no, and I mean, to be honest, and some some of the, even in uh, different worlds, like who you date sort of can help you in that world. For sure, because it's like uh, melding. Dude, it's like if a white dude- with an identity. Yeah, like when the white dudes move to Asia or white women move to Asia and they want to stay there, all uh, and still, like a lot of them end up getting with Asian people from that land because that's who- that's where they want to spend their time. Well, literally, sometimes there's laws that you have to marry somebody from that land to even own property or something yeah, like that. Yeah, so think about it. We're just immigrants in their country, and we're trying to climb up their ladder. And on that ladder, there's just a bunch of white people. And you can date and marry some of these white people along the way. And you might feel like it could help you, and you're going to do it. You know. And then also, it could be even more like, uh, what, have nefarious intentions other than that, too. But I feel like that is what I think a lot of it is. Right, right. I think it's sort of like saying, I hate the rich, but I want to be rich. I have to be rich to fight the rich. I want to be rich so I can be one of the good rich people and not one of the bad rich people. Or I hate the way the rich got the money, but I play the lottery to still potentially get rich for myself. I don't know. Is it like that? Is it not like that? Is that the game theory power dynamics if we just assign variables X, Y, and we take the whole emotion behind race out of it? I don't know. I think, uh, yeah, At the end of the day, man, let us know what you think in the comment section below. I'm not demonizing anybody. She made the video. It went super viral for a reason. Thought it was interesting comments. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace.